All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sony E3 2018 press conference recap and reactions stream. I'm going to here summarize everything that I saw in the Sony conference, as well as give you all of my opinions on it, because I have a lot of things to say about this conference. It lasted a little over an hour. It started around uh, 6 p.m. and ended, I believe, it was around, around like maybe 7.15-ish. Um, although it's kind of funny, because it literally could have been 15 minutes shorter if they had organized this and done it better. I'll explain in just a moment, okay? So, the conference opens up, and there's a bunch of people, and it looks like they're inside of a barn or a tent. It's not clear what this is, okay? Now, I forget the guy's name, but the guy who's the head of Sony, you actually just saw him in the pre-stream art that I was running, uh, if you're here live on stream, I forget his freaking name, comes out in front of these people, and you can immediately tell this arena is way smaller than what they usually do for E3. Why is it so small? And he says, Ladies and gentlemen... Gaming, we like to think of it like a group of people who think of each other and support each other. Basically, he's trying to say like gaming is like religion or something. I don't know. It was really weird the way that he was trying to make this allegory or comparison. It didn't seem like that made sense to me. But basically, he's like, we're here for a reason. Don't worry. And now, without further ado, this guy with a banjo. And a guy comes out with a banjo and he goes... Fast forward five minutes later. He's finally done. Five minutes of a guy playing a banjo. No idea what the hell we're looking at, right? And we're like, oh, man. Did Sony blow it this year? What's going on? What is this weird opening, right? <clears throat> so finally, he finishes playing the banjo. And they cut to... It looks like a square dance inside of the actual building that these people were sitting in watching this conference. So it's kind of like, I guess they were trying to do break the fourth wall deal. You're actually there in the place of where The Last of Us 2 is taking place, I guess. So... It looks like it is a square dance for youth, and Ellie's there, and she's much older than she was in The Last of Us 1. I'd say at least five to six years older, because um, I'm assuming in The Last of Us 1, she was like very, maybe pre-teen or very early teens. Here, she looks like she's maybe like 17, 18, but it's hard to tell. Again, no way you can tell. But she's definitely still a kid, but not super old, okay? Um, and she's watching this girl and a guy dance, and this Asian kid comes up to her. He's like, man, you know... Oh, I don't like these kind of things. And she, she was a look on her face like, oh, God, this kid's going to try to hit on me or something. And then the, the two of them are taking bets on how long it'll be before the girl breaks up with the guy. The next thing you know, the girl comes over to Ellie and pulls her away, holds her by the hand, pulls her close, and is hugging her and says, everyone's looking at you. And Ellie says, well, maybe everyone's looking at you. And then they, they kiss. So, whoa. Now, if you played The Last of Us DLC, you'll know that Ellie actually already had a lesbian kiss in that DLC. So she probably is, you know, a lesbian. So it's not shocking if you played the DLC. But if you didn't, and all you did was play the mainstream Last of Us game, you might be like, whoa, what the hell is going on here, right? So as they're, they're kissing, there's a camera shot that rotates. And as it rotates, it flashes to another scene where Ellie is slitting someone's throat viciously. There's blood squirting everywhere. Blah, he's gurgling to death. The blood's squirting everywhere. It's very visceral and gruesome. Okay? So slashes the throat, throws the guy out of the way like a sack of potatoes. And now she's in stealth. And she's going through grass. She's going through a parking lot. There's people who are after her. And the graphics look good. Although, I'll be honest, her body looks kind of weird to me. Like, her body looked like it was long and gangly. You know what I mean? Like, she had really two long arms and legs for her body. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was just a perspective. I don't know. We haven't really seen the models or anything in too much action. But it was actual gameplay of The Last of Us 2. She's sneaking around. She's doing stealth kills. She's shooting people with arrows. She picks up guns and shoots people. People are hitting her. She's hitting them back. It's very bloody and visceral. She's hitting people in the heads with axes. Finally, she gets shot at and has to run into, like, this supermarket... And she goes into the supermarket and hiding, like, in this little market while the people are all coming after her. And then she gets into a big fight. One of them sees her. She's fighting one. She turns around, shoots the other. She's getting shot in her. And it's a very visceral, gruesome, you know, combat scene. The combat looks good. And then all of a sudden, they go back to the scene where she's kissing the girl. And then it just ends. And you're like, what the hell did I just see? Is, was that real gameplay? Was that just an example of what the game's going to look like? Does that take place in the middle of the game, the beginning of the game, the end of the game? I have no fucking clue what I just saw. And that's it. It just ends. And they don't give you a release date. They give you no more information about the game. They're just like, did you get your delicious taste? Well, tough shit. You know, you're going to have to wait a long-ass time before this buffet opens up again. They slow the doors and they put a big chain around the door and lock the fucker. You can't see anything more about The Last of Us 2 right now. Okay? So... Overall, it was interesting, but we didn't get a lot of answers. There was no Joel. Uh, there were no, no monsters either. There were no monsters or anything in this. So we don't know what's going on in regards to the actual game and the plotline of the game at this point. All right. So then they say, oh, we need intermission. What? 
Now that we look at your watches, you're like, well, your cell phone or whatever. What? Only 10, 15 minutes have passed. Why do we need an intermission? Well, in all their wisdom, whoever designed this Sony press conference this year decided that because they had all those people in that barn or whatever it was for the first segment, now they got to move them over to the actual arena. So guess how long it takes? 15 more minutes. So you've only seen The Last of Us 2. Now you got to sit here and wait. So they cut to this panel of people. You don't know who the hell they are. You know, one of them was the head of Sony and then you there are you know, two other people I've never seen talking about crap. Who knows? So first thing they talk about... Random Q&A segment with the head of Sony and blah, blah, blah. No one gives a crap. Um, then then they ask the guy, you know, one of the biggest requests for God of War, one of the biggest Sony exclusive titles recently is that people want a new game plus. What's going to happen with that? And he says, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen with that. Our people are working on it and there's going to be a new game plus. It's coming. It's in the works. We promise you new game plus uh, for God of War. So at least we got some news with that. Okay. <clears throat> um... Then they said, well, we still got more time to kill. We're not sure what else to do here. So let's just start playing random shit. So they played Call of Duty, all right, and they say Jungle, Summit, Slums, and Firing Range, four maps from classic Call of Duty Black Ops, are going to be back in black, meaning they're coming back to Black Ops 3, um, if you pre-order Black Ops 4. So if you own Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and you pre-order Black Ops 4, they're going to give you Jungle, Summit, Slums, and Firing Range for free in Black Ops 3. So they come back to the panel, all right, and they're like, well, what happens if you don't own Black Ops 3 or you don't have it anymore? Maybe you owned it and traded it in a long time ago. Well, if you're a PS Plus subscriber right now, available for free on PSN is Black Ops 3. They're giving it to all PS Plus subscribers. So, I guess this is a good teaser and a good lead-in to Black Ops 4 if you want to play some Black Ops-style gameplay. Because let's face it, the other Call of Duty, World War II, is so different from the Black Ops style of gameplay, right? Um, you can get the game right now, and you can get four free maps right now if you pre-order Black Ops 4. To which I kind of say two thumbs up, that's cool. But at the same time, imagine if you're the game developer, uh, Sledgehammer, who, who has Call of Duty World War II, or, or World War, uh, yeah, World War II, and you're trying to make your game have more longevity, and all of a sudden now, the same company, you know, is saying, oh, well, fuck you, you know, you had your chance, we're putting Black Ops 3 back out there for free to everyone, so good luck getting anyone to play World War 2 anymore. That's kind of messed up, in my opinion, okay? Um, will I be playing Call of Duty Black Ops 3 again? Probably not. Why? Because Black Ops 3 multiplayer fucking sucked. It had wall running, it had double jumping, you could turn into a fucking robot dog and tear people apart, it had stupid drones firing missiles and double backflip RPGs, it was one of the worst fucking Call of Duty games I ever played in my life, I hated the goddamn game, and there's no chance whatsoever, even with the game being free on PS Plus, that I would go and download that piece of shit again, so no, I'm not playing Black Ops 3 multiplayer, I hate that fucking game. Alrighty then. So in the meantime, since they're still killing time in the interim, I'll kill some time uh, and do some shout-outs. Jay Kramer cheers. He says, people are complaining they didn't get story for Last of Us 2 when they complain they never get gameplay. So now we get gameplay and people still whine because they wanted the story. It's incredible. Okay. I made breakfast cheers. He said, hiding under cars, new game mechanic. Yes, during the gameplay of The Last of Us 2, they showed that Ellie could hide underneath a car as the enemies, you know, walked by or whatever. And one enemy actually looked under, and she shot him, shot her right in the face. It was very brutal and disgusting. So, I don't know if that'll be a new gameplay mechanic or not. We stream no games to subscribe to the channel for the second month in a row. Thank you. And E-Machine 14 has, uh, has resubscribed for the second month in a row. Thank you. And, uh, I Made Breakfast says that was Infinite Warfare, Phil. Uh, yes and no. No, no, no. Black Ops 3 also had the garbage game multiplayer gameplay. If you remember, no, no, no. Black Ops 3... Infinite Warfare was bad, don't get me wrong. I didn't like Infinite Warfare's multiplayer either, but Black Ops 3 was also really bad. I remember the wall running and shit. Like, I hated that game. So, no, I'm not playing Black Ops 3. No way. All right, let's continue on. So, in the meantime, they're still killing time. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's like we're half hour into the press conference, and everyone's like, what the fuck is going on? We only saw Last of Us 2 a half an hour in. We're waiting. We're bored. We don't want to see this fucking panel anymore. Get this shit out of here. We're fucking games, man. It's bullshit. So then they go to a montage, and the montage shows a bunch of random shit, and everyone's so frustrated, no one pays attention to the montage. It doesn't matter, because they didn't show each game for more than, like, three seconds anyway. So then they say, Destiny 2! Everyone's like, oh, fuck. Destiny fucking 2, can we just get to good games? Destiny 2 has the Forsaken DLC coming out on September 4th. <laughs> Pay us more money for the game, idiots. Anyway, enough of that. So then they finally, finally, 
they cut back to the arena. All the people have gotten to a new arena now. It's a new arena for the rest of the press conference. And there's some white guy playing a woodwind instrument. And he's going... That's exactly what the woodwind instrument sounded like. I don't even need to have a woodwind instrument in my hands. I can simulate exactly what the guy sounded like right now. You ready? So there you go. And that lasted like five minutes. They had the guy play this stupid instrument. I have no idea why, because it was a waste of time. So then, it sounded like shit. It really did. So then, they continue on, and they start showing gameplay. <laughs> People are laughing like crazy in the stream chat. They start showing gameplay of Ghost of Tsushima. The first actual gameplay of this game we get to see. This is the new game from um, Sucker Punch, okay? So, it shows Ga. He's on a horse. He gets off the horse. He's a Japanese guy. He's in a, a traditional samurai garb. Walking through a field of, you know, grass, looking around. Uh-oh, they've arrived. Jumps back on his horse. He's riding through this field. Amazing visuals. The graphics, like the, the, it's like fields of wheat, and the wheat is like whipping in the wind. It looks amazing as he's riding through it. He finally gets to, like, a, a, a road, and a bunch of enemy, I guess, enemy-invading samurai are killing people in the road. So he gets off his horse. He starts fighting, and it's pretty cool. You know, get like slashing gameplay, combat. You know, he's parrying, blocking, dodging. You know what I mean. Um... Then finally, he, he intersects uh, a woman, some woman who has a bow and arrow, and she's helping him with the bow and arrow. So they run to a temple that's under attack, and together they take out a bunch of samurai. And then inside the temple, there's someone who the woman wants to kill. She tries to shoot him with the bow and arrow, and he's like, no, you cannot kill him. Uh, you know, you're doing that. You're just as bad as the Mongols or whatever. And the Mongols are almost here. We must not fight each other, because then the Mongols will win. And it's just an extreme close-up of the woman's face. She goes... The Mongols have already won. And then they begin an epic duel. They both are taking out swords and they're fighting each other. Ha, 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 ha. And there's a duel and then it ends. So that's Ghost of Tsushima. Um, can't tell much about the combat just from this gameplay demo trailer, whatever it was. But the graphics look amazing. So at least at the very least, the game looks very visually striking. Um, I think we're continuing on with our Year of the Samurai kind of uh, theme. A lot of games that are, are focused around Samurai E3 this year for whatever reason. I don't know why. But it certainly is like every game is Samurai, Samurai, Samurai. So, more Samurai. Ghost of Tsushima looks pretty good. Um, okay. So then, they go to this new game. Never heard of. Really weird. Basically, it's a, it's a girl with a gun. And she's inside some kind of a house where there's, there's a staircase that looks like... You ever seen one of those pictures... It's like the, the impossible staircase. It looks like the staircase is going up, but then it's like really going down. And it's like a maze. It looks like a labyrinth. You know what I mean? Um, that's kind of what this looks like. And it's shifting and changing constantly on the fly. Then it shows that there's combat. The combat's bizarre. It's got like enemies with blood splatters, but they're teleporting. It looks like there may be like a time shift or some kind of a weird mechanic. Then the girl's using telekinesis to push items around and throw things around and attack enemies. And the color scheme is really weird when you're doing this. Very bizarre. Um... It's called Control. It's from Remedy and 505 Games. And it says it's coming out in 2019. It was definitely interesting to see. But I have no fucking clue what that game is. Like, you couldn't tell from what they showed what on earth you were looking at. Like, they definitely have to make a more coherent kind of presentation for that game moving forward. Because I don't know what the hell that was. <clears throat> but anyway. Uh, Remedy. Uh, wasn't Remedy the people who made... Um, I'm having a brain fart. They just made that game that flopped. Didn't they? Did they or did they not? Remedy made, wasn't it? Oh, God, what's the name of the game? I can't do it. I'm having, I'm having a massive brain fart here. I know what game it is. Wasn't it the game uh, where it was the time-shifting mechanic? It had the actor from the following. Quantum Break. Thank you, guys. I couldn't think of the name of the fucking game. Quantum Break. And that was, what, two, three years ago? Right? So, a new game from them. Looks interesting, but I hate to say it. Quantum Brick also looked really interesting, but when it translated into a game, it wasn't that good of a game. So, I'm curious to see what they could do with this, and now that it's not a Microsoft-exclusive game anymore, let's see what they can do. Alright. <clears throat> okay. Then, the next thing that, that appeared, okay, in this press conference, I think blew everyone away and surprised the living shit out of all of us. So, you are a mouse. You're from the perspective of a mouse. Running around, crawls up a, a rack, eating food off of a rack. Then there's a cop 
And he's saying to a person inside of the same room you're in, it looks like it's a storage closet or like a storage room. Hey, what are you doing in here? You're not supposed to be here. I got to report you. Hey, what are you doing? I got to get you out here. Oh, you hear them like fumbling and fighting. The next thing you know, the rat knocks to the floor and the rat falls over, kills the rat. So the rat's dead. All of a sudden it cuts to the floor and it shows the cop or the, the patrol guard, whoever it is, on his back and then all of a sudden a fucking vicious zombie goes ah, rah, 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 and rips his throat out viscerally blood gore everywhere and he stands up and then all of a sudden you hear blah 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 the zombie gets blown away they cut back ladies and gentlemen it's fucking leon kennedy motherfuckers it's the resident evil 2 motherfucking remake and the game looks great i mean the game looks first of all totally redesigned like i recognize some of the locations they were showing but it doesn't even look like the rooms, the setup, or even the gameplay is going to be the same as the original Resident Evil 2. It looks like they really have redesigned the game from the ground up. There's all new dialogue. Like, yes, some of the characters I recognize. Like, they showed the black cop, who is the first guy who Kennedy runs into. And he says, whatever you do, you know, shoot them first because, they, you know, they don't trust them. They're going to kill you. Because remember, this is when the outbreak first happens. So you think, you know, maybe you think maybe the people are just not listening or they're enraged or whatever. You don't shoot. But no, the guy's like, no, shoot them first. Don't ask any questions. But then there's other, I think there's other characters there I didn't even recognize. So it was kind of interesting. Um, very interesting. And the game looks great. And then they announced the biggest bombshell ever. Ladies and gentlemen, it's available now. No, I'm kidding. It's not available now. I know some of you probably just got angry at me. It's available on January 25th, 2019. So it's out early next year, January. That's pretty damned crazy, right? That's pretty cool, especially because we hadn't seen no gameplay or anything from this until tonight. And now we know it's coming out in six months. One of the very first releases of uh, 2019, which is pretty awesome, right? So that's cool. Two thumbs up for that. That got me really excited for Resident Evil 2 Remake next year. Sounds good. Time for some shout-outs. Um, let's see here. Oh, my God. There's a lot of cheers. Kate cheers. I don't get why, why Ellie being a lesbian is wrong. It's like I keep seeing people saying SJW is ruining. How, how does being a lesbian and SJW thing really annoying? I, I agree. I think people are just being picky. Like I said, if you played The Last of Us DLC, you already knew about this. So it's not that like a big discovery. I think a lot of people didn't play the DLC and now they're like shocked or some shit. Uh, but this was part of the mainstream plot line years and years ago when the DLC was released. ISD Captain Cheers, how come everyone liked wall running in jetpacks in Titanfall, but not in Call of Duty? I don't know. No one, no one played Titanfall, so I don't know what you're talking about. Green Machine 223 resub for the 12th month in a row. So thank you very much, Green Machine, for the resub. Emperor Swaggins cheered. He says, I understand the hate for the way it was presented, but can you really hate take points away from that? The shit doesn't matter. It's about the game's period. Mozalis cheered 50 bits. Says, you forgot that the guy playing the woodwind instrument before Ghost of Tsushima was dressed in full Japanese traditional attire like an idiot. They couldn't find a real Japanese person to play that woodwind instrument. I guess not. Uh, they could have had me. I would have shown up and just said... I would have pretended to hold a woodwind instrument and I would have went and I would have done it for free because it sounded exactly the fucking same. War Knight Sheard said it's called Control. Yes, that game from Remedy is called Control. I thought I mentioned that. Rink Dude did a 500-bit cheer. Says RE2 looks great. I agree. The Resident Evil 2 remake does look quite good. And Sir Noble resub for the 17th month in a row and says 17 months. Thank you for your awesome coverage of E3 and thank you for 17 months of support, Sir Noble. Let's keep this show rolling. Okay. So up next, what did they present? They presented something fucking weird. It's a guy in a bathtub. He starts talking. Now, when he talks, he's talking in the mannerisms of Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. And the art style of what you're seeing looks like Rick and Morty, but it's not Rick and Morty. So I think it was the voice actor for Rick not doing the Rick, like, mannerism in his voice. Like, the, you know how Rick has, like, a rough voice? Um... So I think that he's do it was the same voice actor, but doing it in a different vo a different manner. And he says, here's a new game. It's called uh, Trover Saves the Universe. It's totally the best game. Don't pay attention to the guy in the bathtub playing the game. Look at the game, because the game's good. Isn't this a great game? One of the best games ever, guys. It's a game. Look at this game. And then his TV falls in the bathtub, electrocutes him. And then the door opens, and another weird-looking character comes in who has the exa same exact voice actor of Morty. And he says, oh, no, someone called the police, and you should try Trevor, Trevor Saves the Universe or whatever. So apparently there's a game coming out soon from the makers of Rick and Morty. Doesn't have a release date. Looks like a weird-ass platformer. Uh, okay, then. Kingdom Hearts 3, ladies and gentlemen. We thought we were done. Because Kingdom Hearts 3, we saw a big reveal last night at the Microsoft press conference that Frozen will officially be a world in it. 
And we also saw that Ratatouille will be a summon. So we're like, man, we saw a lot. At the Square Enix press conference earlier today, they revealed absolutely no information about their the game at their own fucking press conference. So we thought we were done. But wait, there's more. A whole new bunch of information about Kingdom Hearts 3. They reveal that you're returning to the Pirates of the Caribbean world. Captain Jack Sparrow once again will join your party against the fight against the Order or whatever the fuck they're called. I don't even remember their names. Um, one of the, the key elements of the game is that they're basically trying to get a character from Disney from each gaming world. And they said they need seven pure lights to become the new seven hearts. So what that says to me, seven worlds. So if we've got Pirates, Frozen, Tangled, Toy Story, Monsters, Inc. That's five. Do we have two other definitive worlds that we know about yet? I think Hercules may be one, but I'm not 100%. So if it's Hercules, that means there's only one world left. So what's the final Disney world, right? So, I don't know, but I mean, we may already have seen most of the worlds with like one left to reveal before now in January when the game comes out, okay? Uh, oh, Big Hero 6 people are saying... So that's all seven then. So now we know all seven gaming worlds. All right, so that's it. We know the whole game, and no one's going to buy it in January. That's the end of it. All right, probably not. Um, I also showed the girl Kyrie. She's back. She looks completely different. Apparently, she's friendly with one of the people in that order or whatever. I don't know. Comes out January 29th, but that was more information about the game. All right, so now. Let's do some more shout-outs. Shout-out to AES, who cheered. He said, I hope that Kojima knows what he's doing. I still have no idea what Death Stranding is. Incidentally, we're about to talk about Death Stranding. And for... Four Arm Shock did a 100-bit cheer and said Rick and Morty are voiced by the same person. Oh, I didn't even know that. I had no idea that Rick and Morty are actually voiced by exactly the same person. I made breakfast cheer. He said the Marvel Universe is going to be the last world. Ah, there you go. That's it. Thanos is the final boss. Just when you think you're going to overcome the, you know, the Heartless, he snaps his fingers and all the heroes disappear and the game ends. That's it. And then you get your golden trophy. You got fucked. This actually says you got fucked by Thanos is the final trophy and Kingdom Hearts 3 ends. Okay. Death Stranding. So, let's talk about this, guys. There's a lot to absorb. First of all, it shows Norman Reedus and his character in what appears to almost look like an environmental or space suit. He's wearing a ginormous backpack, okay? And he's running around in all these different environments. He's running on grass, then he's running on what looks like the planet Mars, then he's running up a mountainside that has some green vegetation on it, okay? So it looks like he's a lot of platforming, a lot of kind of movement. Then you hear him in dialogue between some kind of another character saying that he's a he needs to deliver stuff like he's a delivery man, he has to deliver the package. So now it kind of starts making sense. He's going across some kind of landscape delivering items, okay? He's a delivery man. Um, then, in a really weird take, it shows him, like, wading through a river, and he's got a mummified dead body on his back. Like, it's clear as day it's a dead body, mummified, and I'm like, this is really weird. Does this mean he's transporting human remains every time that he's doing a delivery? Like, what's going on here, right? Pretty weird. <clears throat> so then, they cut to a scene where he's, like, in a cave, and he's, like, like healing himself. I guess his foot's all fucked up or whatever from delivering stuff, so he's, like, pulling shit out of his foot, and all of a sudden... His skin starts to, like, turn pink and red and bubble up. And it looks like he's getting a rash on his skin. So, like, what the fuck is going on? All right. All of a sudden, you start seeing human handprints slam into the ground. But you can't see what's creating the handprint. So, it's an invisible monster of some sort that has human hands. just going on the ground. You can hear, like, a growl. Like, brrr, like it's angry. And all of a sudden, Norman Reedus gets completely fucking scared. Like, oh, shit. I'm about to get fucked. And all of a sudden, a girl appears out of nowhere. A blonde girl in this weird suit with spikes piking out of it. I don't know what the hell was up with the suit. She goes, and she pulls him against the cave wall, and they both cover each other's mouths. Now, apparently, whatever this monster is, walks right the fuck up to them and doesn't detect them. So it seems to me like whatever this monster is is blind. It can't see. But maybe it detects by sound, so cover your mouth so you don't make a breathing sound. Or maybe it can detect movement of air. I don't know. But they do like this. The monster goes away, okay? But then as it goes away, they look up at the sky, and they can see five what seem to be transparent-looking bodies floating in the sky. Very odd, okay? This isn't the end of the gameplay yet. It continues. It gets fucking even weirder, okay? So then later on, they show uh, Norman Reedus again, like, fr f trying to fix his foot, and he rips his fucking toenail right off his foot. It's disgusting. He's just like, blood squirting. It's nasty. Um... Then it shows him talking again about a delivery or something. Then he's inside of what looks like a warehouse. And all of a sudden, he says, uh-oh, they're here or something. And he says, well, I've got an idea. He pulls out a pack 
which looks like it's translucent or transparent, like you can see through it, and it's big, it's like a big bubble pack. He attaches it to his chest as a hose, he plugs it into himself, it makes this big lamp come out of his shoulder. Think of like War Machine has like turrets that come out of his shoulder. It's kind of like a lamp comes out of his shoulder. A light turns on inside this bubble pack on his chest is a fucking baby. The baby is apparently powering the suit. And so the suit starts blinking a strobe light out of this fucking turret out of his shoulder. And he runs outside and apparently those invisible monsters are outside. But they're all floating. And now instead of being like translucent, now they're like black shadows. And they have these weird tendrils that are attached to their bodies whipping around. And you don't know what the fuck's going on. And he's like using the light to point at them. And it seems like when he points the strobe light at them, they get distracted or they don't attack him directly. But then all of a sudden he accidentally walks into one. A bunch of them all run up and grab him. As they're grabbing him, this like bubbling oil tar-like substance comes out of the ground, grabs him, pulls him down into the ground. A big arm comes around his head, pulls him in. And then he's dead. And that's it. And that's the end. That's the end of the game. But I don't know actually what happened. It's very bizarre. I don't know what the fuck happened, all right? So then they show the blonde girl again. She says something about always take something. And she has a little worm. It looks like a little, like a little almost flesh-colored caterpillar. And she fucking eats it. It makes a chomping sound. Then you hear another woman saying, you don't know who I am yet, do you? And then it shows a, a mysterious blonde woman. And then it just fades away. And that's it. No information on release. No information on what the fuck the game is. No fucking information. And we're all just as confused as before. But I have to say this. At least we have an idea that the game has certain kinds of gameplay elements. It looks like it is going to be some kind of survival horror style game. With sneaking elements and using technology to evade whatever these fucking weird ass monsters are in the game in the world. And it certainly seems it's like it's going to be fucking original. Because never before have I ever seen a game that looked anything like that in my motherfucking life. So at least when we play Death Stranding, even if the game sucks monkey tits, at least the game will be an original and it's not a rehashed fucking game we've already played before. Hallelujah that Kojima is an original fucking person who has, a, a, you know, actual creativity in his head and not another one of these game creators that just rehashes the fuck out of everything. At least Death Stranding will be interesting. So, that was actually kind of cool, and I actually liked that portion of the, uh, the, the conference. Okay. Alright, more shoutouts. Uh, Mozalis cheered 50 bits. He says, I thought Natalie Portman would show up in Death Stranded. I immediately thought it was Annihilation 2.0. Nope, she was not in that. And I didn't see Annihilation, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Ornites cheered and said, let's give a toast to Resident Evil 2, the only reason Sony's dead, dead audience revived. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's true. They really killed the audience, moving them from that first barn to the next arena. They were, like, bored because they were so tired of having to move. And then Resident Evil 2, they like, oh, my God, they got all excited. Johnny Soros Rex cheered. He said, do you think Kojima was high when he made the game? No, he was probably sipping some absinthe or something. You know, the usual. His usual, you know... For you and me, the day that you drink absinthe is like a weird day where you fuck your life up and you kill a million brain cells. But for Kojima, it's just Tuesday. So there you go. All right. Wow. Call me Thick Daddy Thanks cheered. And he said, suits powered by babies, worm eating, shadow people everywhere. You can't get more weird than this. I, I, I don't know. Maybe you can. Rick and Morty's pretty fucking weird too. All right. So then... They show, show a trailer of more samurai. Like, dude, this really... I mean, between all the games we've seen, this is Year of the Motherfucking Samurai. Almost all... The, you know, every major press conference had samurai of some sort in them. Well, this time, it's a samurai who's fighting demons. I think you know where this is going. It's Neo 2 being officially announced. And there's no release date and no information. They don't even show gameplay. They're just officially announcing that they're working on it. There you go. To close the show... Uh... Excuse me. To close the show, it's Spider-Man. That's right. Spider-Man from uh, Insomniac Games, right? They've been working on this game for several years. We've wanted a new Spider-Man game for quite a while. We're finally getting it. And we finally get to see our first real hands-on gameplay of the gameplay game element and, uh, and engine. Um, so, first of all, Spider-Man is in a chopper. And the chopper gets a little talked by Electro. Oh my god, he saves the girl who's in the chopper. Apparently he's at a prison, like a prison that's off on like an island. Think like, uh, is it Riker's Island? That Remember they used to have that prison? No, Alcatraz. Think Alcatraz, like a prison on an island, okay? Apparently this is where they keep all the supervillains. 
Electro, for some reason, is freeing all the supervillains. So Spider-Man goes inside and starts fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat with these supervillains. Now, I'll be honest. It looks very similar to the gameplay engine of previous Spider-Man games and also the Batman Arkham series. But it seems like there's variations where now you can launch your enemies with an uppercut, jump up and kick them in midair for juggles. You can hit them with the web, swing them around. You can also bounce off walls. So if you have a wall near you, you can do like a wall-propelled kick and stuff like that. Um, he has, it looks like he has a meter that he charges during combos, and when he has high enough combo level, he can do, like, a combo finisher. So he had, like, a 32-hit combo. All of a sudden, he jumped up and just shot web shots everywhere and hit every single enemy with a web shot and knocked them all out at once, which was pretty cool. Um... So it's free-flowing, for free-form combat, but there's also web-swinging. He starts chasing Electro around the edges of the, the prison, and he's swinging, and you can see little dots where, you know, press the button to attach there, your web or whatever, and the person who's playing the game is not actively attaching to each one. He's just picking certain ones, so it's kind of interesting, the free-forming web-swinging and everything you can do. Finally, he catches up with Electro, but then all these other supervillains show up, show up, including the Rhino. And no, not the Paul Giamatti Rhino, the real motherfucking Rhino. Uh, Scorpion... And then as he's fighting, uh, uh, you know, these these uh, villains, he's actually cra wisecracking, which is what Spider-Man's supposed to do. He's supposed to be a wisecracking teenager, and it looks like that's the version of Spider-Man they're going with, which I say, great, that's what he's supposed to be. I mean, honestly, Spider-Man was almost the archetype for Deadpool in a lot of ways. Um, Vulture shows up, he's fighting Vulture, and then finally this guy, I think it's Negative Man is his name, he's an Asian guy who, like, he's, he looks like a negative picture, you know, like a negative of film, and he's shooting dark rays. So they're all beating the fuck out of Spider-Man, they're beating the fuck, they're beating the crap out of him, and you're pounding him down, real gangland style beat down, they're like stomping the shit out of him, and fucking Spider-Man looks like his body is all decrepit and broken, all his fucking, well, his spider limbs are snapped in a million places, and then all of a sudden he looks up and he goes, it's you, and then it ends, that's it, it just ends, and you have no idea what the hell's going on, um, but it's cool, because there seems like there's a lot of Spider-Man villains, maybe they'll have a Sinister Six of sort in the game, which would be really cool, um, and it was really, it was a good trailer, and then, the, then, um, I'll talk about this after, but they did show more gameplay later, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but, so it was a really good trailer in my opinion, the weirdest thing happened, okay, so, they just, like, show, like, a recap of everything, and then the, the thing ends, but not really, because then they go back to that weird panel of people that was outside trying to kill time earlier, and they start talking about new stuff. They're like, so now here's a new game from From Software, and it's for the PSVR, and it shows, oh, like, you're inside of a school, and it looks like there's, like, a school marm, but there's also, like, a guy who maybe works at the school. It's very hard to tell. It's a PSVR game from From Software called Deracine, or Deracine. I don't know how the fuck to pronounce it. And you have no idea what it is because they show zero gameplay. And everyone's like, uh, is the press conference over yet? I'm a little confused. They, no one really said goodnight or nothing. Then all of a sudden, they're like, we're going to show gameplay of Spider-Man. So now they show Spider-Man web-swinging through New York City, free form. And then he lands in an alley and there's a bunch of enemies. He's fighting the enemies. He's doing these cool combos. Like, wow, this is really cool. Like, but wait a minute. The press conference actually is over. Oh, Okay. So whatever. So I guess the press conference just kind of ended out of nowhere. They didn't even say like good night, thanks, or nothing like that. It just fucking just out of nowhere. It just ended. All right. So by the way, uh, shout a couple more shout outs. Shout out to Random Ron, who cheers in Neo Two Hype. The Age of the Samurai continues, and also Middle Gear Rex cheered. He says it's Rikers Island, Phil. Okay, there you go. It was Rikers Island um, that I guess that prison was supposed to be. Okay. So. Let's recap everything at the Sony press conference because it was kind of disjointed and kind of broken. Um, you know what I mean? It was kind of broken, the fact that the way that they, they split it up with that weird barn. So The Last of Us 2, does it look good? Yes and no. Like, the gameplay looked all right, but it seemed like it was staged gameplay. It didn't seem like that was real in-game gameplay that you could do in the actual game. And I think what they were trying to do was throw you into the world to understand, you know, the game is way further ahead, you know, years ahead of The Last of Us 1 and all that. But at the same time, it was just, it really posed a lot of questions. And it didn't really answer any of them because they didn't give you a date, they didn't give you nothing. So it was good to see The Last of Us, but I don't know why the hell that everyone needed to be in a friggin' barn for it. And I don't really think it added anything to it. And the fact that they just had 15 minutes of dead air after The Last of Us presentation was terrible. And it really killed the press conference and just deflated the entire crowd. Um, the guy on the woodwind instrument was a fucking joke. They didn't need him. What a waste of time. Ghost of Tsushima looks pretty good, but I haven't seen enough to really make a judgment yet. But from what I saw today, the graphics were beautiful. So there you go. 
Um, Control, I'm intrigued. But again, I was intrigued by Quantum Break, and Con Quantum Break kind of sucked. So I hope that Remedy can make a better game with whatever Control is. Resident Evil 2 Remake, amazing. The game looks great. The graphics are good. New voice acting. New lines. New characters. New, you know, rooms and stuff. Everything's laid out differently. Looks great to me. I can't wait to play it in January. I hope you guys are excited too. Whatever this, this game for the makers of Rick and Morty, I have no fucking clue about that. Kingdom Hearts 3, I'll be honest. I actually was not really hyped for Kingdom Hearts 3, but now that I've actually saw a bunch of stuff at E3, like, you know, the Frozen World, it's going to have summons like Wreck-It Ralph and Ratatouille, I actually think I, I, I'm getting excited for the game again, you know? Now, I've played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, the, the, the HD remakes, a long time ago, years ago, and I've fervently waited. Everyone tells me, you got to play Birth by Sleep and Dream Dot Distance and Dark Drop Dream Distances Don't Die and It's a Small World After All and whatever the fuck all the versions of you know, uh, Kingdom Hearts have been over the years to get the backstory. I don't care about all that. If anything, I'm just going to play the game at face value and enjoy it, and the stuff that I saw at E3 actually has got me excited, and I'm actually looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 3 now, so that was pretty good. Death Stranding, thank God we finally have some information about it, but again, it posed more questions than anything else. Is this really just going to be survival horror where you really don't fight and you're just trying to escape and, you know, deliver items and survive? What are these creatures? Why are you eating worms? Who the fuck is Norman Reedus supposed to be? Why is there a baby strapped to his goddamn chest? What the fuck is Kojima thinking when he comes up with these ideas? These are all questions that we need answers and we don't have any yet. And we don't even know when the game's coming out and that's kind of the most frustrating because I wanted some of that, alright? Um, Neo 2, glad to know it's coming out, but I wish we had more information. We didn't see any fucking uh, gameplay whatsoever of that. And Spider-Man, in my opinion, looks great. So, overall, Sony's press conference was hit or miss. It was great because they had good games that they presented, but it was really ruined, kind of like, the disjointedness of doing the first part in a barn, having a banjo, and then the woodwind, and all the stupid broken shit that they had in between. Like, just show up. All they need to do, go to the first, the, the one arena, show the games. We don't need all the fancy fluff shit. And it would have been a better conference. Because it was disjointed, it actually frustrated people. And honestly, even though I liked seeing a lot of the shit that was in the conference, there wasn't enough definitive information for me to say they won E3. If you said Death Stranding coming out, you know, in 2020, fine, at least I know it's coming out in fucking 2020, right? Or, you know, give me some definitive information, not a little teaser here, a little teaser there, and we have no fucking clue about any of our games when they're coming out. That's kind of ridiculous. So, in my opinion, Sony gets a B. A ranking of B. They kind of tie with Microsoft and they kind of tie with Bethesda. It seems like really for me, at least initially now watching all these major press conferences, I don't think anyone won E3 this year. Microsoft had a ton of new information on world exclusives, but didn't have any real good, uh, you know, Microsoft exclusives uh, for their consoles. So therefore, they really didn't win E3. Bethesda, again, announced a bunch of stuff. The good thing about Bethesda was Fallout uh, 76, but everything else didn't have dates and really had limited information. Sony, again, lots of information, but no solid dates or anything. We need more solid information from E3, not vague Ds and, you know, oh, you know, un you know, this game's coming out, and then it, it, you, who knows? Some of these games could pull a fucking Last Guardian and never come out for like 10 fucking years if you don't give us at least a time frame to expect them. You see what I mean? So... It frustrates me. I liked the Sony conference. I liked the games presented in it. But outside of all the games there, the only one that had a definitive date was Spider-Man. So, great, you know, but I can't say, oh, you destroyed E3 when you can't even give me a solid time frame of when I can expect one of your fucking games. So, I think Sony got to be and kind of tied a lot of the other guys, and I don't think they definitely won E3, but they also didn't do a bad job. They've done much better in the past, but they've also done worse, so it is what it is, okay? All right, final shout-outs. Mozalis cheered 100 bits. He says... Glad I made, the I made the stream tonight. I had a few laughs as always. Skyfall122 subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Skyfall, for the sub tonight. And AES Cheers said, Kojima said in an interview a few minutes ago that you'll be able to shoot your way through the dead st Death Stranding, but it will be an unwise choice. So you can shoot your way through Death Stranding, but it's very unwise. Much like it's very unwise if you try to ask him what the fuck the game's about, because I don't think even he knows. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my final... E3 press conference recap and, and uh, reaction stream, just so you know. However, if you've been watching these all weekend long and you want more from me, this coming Thursday, I'm going to be doing a podcast where I'm going to summarize my thoughts about E3. I'm going to tell you the things I really like, the things I didn't like, and I'm going to tell you who I think definitively maybe did win E3 after thinking about it. And plus, I'm going to be talking about more games that undoubtedly, once people are allowed to hit the show floor tomorrow, Tuesday, 
I'll have more games to talk about. So please check out that podcast later on this week. But outside of that, thank you guys very much for watching my E3 coverage, whether you watched it live on stream, whether you watched it on demand on YouTube. I'm very appreciative that you guys did. Thank you very much for all of your support. Thank you to Mozales for a final 50-bit cheer. He said, good stream. I want to say thanks for watching You know all my E3 stuff. It's all available on demand on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming. If you missed any of it previously, it's there in a playlist. Easiest day to see. And uh, FYI, Popsicolo just cheered and said, if you want, he will be checking out Nintendo tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I am going to watch Nintendo stuff eventually, but I'm not going to watch it at 9 a.m. I'll just watch it at my own leisure during the week, and I'll talk about it on my podcast on Thursday. But Popsicolo says, if you guys want to show up early tomorrow for the stream, because I usually stream around 10, 15 a.m., you want to show up early to watch Nintendo with Pops, he'll be... uh, you know, doing it, and I'll have my channel host him like I've been doing all week. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching my coverage. I appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, you know, tuning into my E3 stuff. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys on Thursday for the podcast. Later, guys. Later. Oh, by the way, one final time. I'm playing a woodwind instrument. I'm Japanese.